Donnie, I think you'll like this song. <laughs> the whole time, I don't usually try fancy things when y'all are around. <laughs> so if I mess up, it's because they make me nervous. But, um, <laughs> this song is called I Know, and it says, I know you're good. And our church family is probably sick of hearing me sing it, but... Um, short testimony this mom and dad will be here they'll hopefully agree with me but this year has been particularly rough there's five of us in our little immediate family and something this year since last jubilee has happened to each of us health wise um one of my brothers passed away and this song is called i know he's good and i know he's good because Shame on me, I'd probably given up on this brother ever getting saved. And he went through cancer, um, lung cancer, it spread to his brain. He went into terrible seizures, and we didn't think he was going to make it. I was pretty certain the night they called in the helicopter, it took so long to take off, I thought he was gone, and they were just biden time but the lord spared him he woke up from those seizures still had his mind even with eight lesions of cancer there still had his mind and somewhere in those last weeks the lord saved him and even there when he couldn't speak much he would look at us and he would point up and say god and then point to his heart that's how i know he's still good You don't answer all my questions But you hear me when I speak You don't keep my heart from breaking But when it does you weep with me You're so close that I can feel you When I've lost the words to pray and though my eyes have never seen you, I've seen enough to say. I know that you are good. I know that you are kind. I know that you are so much more than what I leave behind. I know that I am loved. I know that I am saved Cause even in the fire to live is Christ To die is gain I know that you are good mm -hmm. I don't understand the sorrow But you're the calm within my storm Sometimes this weight is overwhelming, but I don't carry it alone. You're still close when I can't feel you. I don't have to be afraid. And though my eyes have never seen you, I've seen enough to say. I know that you are good. I know that you were kind I know that you were so much more than what I leave behind I know that I am loved I know that I am saved cuz even in the fire to live is Christ to die is gain I know that you are good, you're good. On my darkest day, from my deepest pain, through it all, my
my heart will choose to sing your praise on my darkest day from my deepest pain through it all my heart will choose to sing your praise I know that you are good I know that you are kind I know that you are so much more than what I leave behind I know that I am loved I know that I am saved cause even in the fire to live is Christ to die is gain I know that you are good I know that you are good I know that you are good Oh, what a Savior. I know he's good. Amen. Glory. That's good. Can I take just two or three minutes here to say something about missions? Uh, and I want to brag on this church, and some of you preachers don't even know this, but I was down here a few weeks ago, and uh, the church decided in just a little bit after church, they were going to help some orphanages, a couple of orphanages in Myanmar, and 10 preachers over there that we're trying to support every month. And help they did. $10,000 worth of help. My goodness. Yeah, yeah. Look around you here. 10,000. Praise God. Yes. I didn't have any pictures that night, but I got a couple of pictures. We bought some rice. These are going to be y'all's. You can do with them what you want. They, they got some rice. They eat rice over a lot. Three times a day. Here's, uh, what, uh, six of those preachers. And uh, by the way, right now in Myanmar, uh, a preacher and some of those orphans are praying for me as I preach tonight. Hallelujah. That's one of the preachers. That's how they get around over there. Uh, Gas is pretty expensive, and they got a lot of hills, so they do motorbikes. Oh, and this is what I, how I got around when I was over there. I'm lying like a rug. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I thought that, that, was, that was a good picture. There's some orphans. Look at that. Ain't they precious? Y'all help to take care of them. Get them rice and so on. Here's one of them that they, you know, kids fall down. And, and when they fall down over there, they don't have any money to take them to a hospital or a doctor unless somebody else who cares helps them. Y'all look around at some people who cared and helped that little girl. Here's the uh, Emmanuel Baptist Orphanage. We took this picture while we were there. And uh, uh, wonderful, beautiful children. Praise God. And I, this one's the one that stands out in my mind, this little girl. I don't know who gave her that little dress, uh, but she was proud to wear it. And precious, precious kids, thank God for them. And uh, I'm going to leave these up here. And I just want to brag on the Lord Jesus and Blue Ridge Baptist Church. We were overwhelmed. They were. They said, "You're kidding me," and they were overwhelmed. Praise God, and uh, continue to pray uh, for those uh, precious children and precious pastors in that part of the world. And we're so blessed. If if you want to complain a little bit about America, and we all can do that, just take a trip around the world. And you'll want to, I come back home, we got off the plane in Washington, D.C., and 
the uh, guy there, I don't know what you call him, but you got to go there through there before you can get customs, before you can get back in. I thought, oh, Lord, just let me back in. <laughs> I just want to come back in. He, here's what he said. He said, welcome home. Glory. Now, I ain't homosexual, but I wanted to kiss him right yeah. in the mouth. I did. I thank God for America. I thank God for the privilege to serve the Lord. Yes. Well, Brother Jack, uh, I, you nailed it last night with that uh, basket theology, basket doctrine. Uh, I think... Uh, we can say, oh, what a savior. That's what you said. That's what he's saying. Uh, I, I'm not, uh, I, I don't have dignified on my uh, resume. Uh, I, I have a dream too, Brother Jack. I, it's a recurring dream as well. I have it all the time. I'm supposed to preach and I'm not ready to preach. One time I looked down and I didn't have my shoes on. I was barefoot. I was in the building. I can't preach barefoot. Well, I could have, but I thought I couldn't. Uh, I, one time I, I couldn't find my Bible. I, I thought, oh, my soul, I can do without those sorry notes, but the Word of God, I don't. And I dreamed this over and over. One time I'm supposed to get to the pulpit and I can't get there. Well, I'm afraid I'm going to add something to my nightmare about preaching tonight. And this is how you know that Dignified is not on my resume. I forgot something before I come tonight. A year ago, I preached homecoming at my home church. And I was preaching along and having a good time, and all of a sudden, my teeth about to go to the third row. I've had dentures since I was 27 years old. Susie, you're sitting too far away. I told her to sit on the third row so that if they come out, she could catch them. And here's what I forgot. Ever since then, I put a little bit of glue on them things so they ain't going nowhere. I forgot that tonight. So all you, uh, everybody stay awake now. Y'all stay awake. You got your catcher's mitt, Mikey? No, Donnie was the catcher. Hey, you be ready. I'll just point at you. <laughs> I want you to turn 2 Kings chapter 7. Now I got a little bit of a jump on these guys because about a month ago I told you I was here and preached and I didn't know what the theme of this meeting was. And I preached on Acts 9, hold the rope, somebody's in your basket. Well, Ralph was sitting over here beside his wife. They're separated right now. I don't know what's what's going on. Maybe I have to do a little counseling later, you know. <laughs> but anyway, he's sitting right over here and his wife is sitting right back. And they just cracked up when I introduced my title. And I thought, oh my, he just preached this this morning, I know. But this is it. This is what I got. This is what I'm given. And they told me after church that that was the theme of the meeting. So I've already preached on Acts 9. It wasn't much, but I preached on it. Uh, I, I'm not a theologian. I can barely spell theology. Uh, but I, I try to just preach Jesus, preach the word and help somebody. Amen. Now I try to study it, but I'm not going to, I guarantee you this. And I believe every preacher here on the front row will say amen to this. When we get to heaven, the Lord's going to say, boy, what were you thinking? Second row too, Butch. What were you a thinking with what you were a preaching? And he'll give us the date and time. Gary, he's good with remembering the dates and times. We'll remember that day. But we do what we do for the glory of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And so uh, I want to share a thought or two from you, with you out of 2 Kings chapter 7, trying to keep my teeth in, sit down, shut up, and let Donnie preach. How's that? Verse 1. Now you know this story, I hope. A great famine in the land. A troublesome time in Jerusalem. There are a lot of reasons for it, but it was hard times. 
You want to know how hard a time it was? Just read verse 25 of the previous chapter. And there was a great famine in Samaria, and behold, they besieged it until an ass's head was sold for four score pieces of silver and a fourth part of a calf of a dog's dung for five pieces of silver. Now, I don't know all about what all of that is, and I guarantee you, uh, some of these preachers here probably do, and I've studied it at times, but I've forgotten most of what I've studied. But I'll tell you this. It wasn't good. <laughs> it was bad times. It was hard times. Well, some people responded to those hard times. And then we get down to chapter 7. And Elisha, then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel. That's cheap. And two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Now this is what a lot of us uh, uh, church members and church people might would say if we were to say what we were thinking, but we don't usually say what we're thinking, and we preachers are glad about that. Mm -hmm. Verse 2. Then the Lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord would make the windows in heaven, might this thing be. In other words, you are, that's a pipe dream. You're crazy. And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but thou shalt not eat of it. Be careful of unbelief. And there were four lepers, men, leprous men at the entering end of the gate and they said one to another why sit here till we die if we say we will enter into the city then the famine is in the city we shall die there and if we sit still here we die also now therefore come and let us fall onto the host of the scenes if they save us alive we shall live if they kill us we shall but die and they arose up in the twilight to go into the camp of the Assyrians, and when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. Where'd they go? Oh, what a Savior, Caleb, for the Lord. You know the Lord just shows up at the most unusual times. For the Lord made a host of the Assyrians to hear a noise of chariot and a noise of horses, 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 <laughs> a little. Uh, even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel hath hired against us the king of the Hittites and the king of the Egyptians to come upon us. Wherefore they arose and fled in the twilight and left their tents and their horses and their asses, even the camp as it was. And they fled for their life. They were running for their life from somebody they couldn't see. And when these lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent and did eat and drink and carried that silver and gold and raiment and went and hid it. Came again, entered into another tent and carried it tents also and went and hid it. Then they said one to another, we do not well. This day is a day of good tidings. We hold our peace. If we tarry till the morning light, some mischief will come upon us. Now therefore come, that we may go and tell the king's household. Let me pray. Father, help me now to say what you want, to communicate to the minds and hearts of your people, to stir them, to encourage them, to help them. Lord, hide me behind the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, may people see Jesus. May we go away from here tonight when both of us have finished preaching saying, oh, how good God is. Yes. That is my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 In Genesis chapter 4 and verse 9, uh, the Bible says, And the Lord said unto Cain, 
Where is thy Abel, thy brother? And Cain said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? That word keeper, the Hebrew word is shamar. And I, that's my hillbilly translation of it. But I looked it up, and it means to hedge about, to guard, to protect, and attend to. That's what Strong said about it. And he said, am I my brother's keeper? Now, Cainism says, Abel isn't my responsibility. Cainism. The world is out for themselves. They're out for number one. Yes, sir. That's the way of Cain. They're looking out for themselves. But Christianity, Jesus, came not to be ministered unto, but to minister. Amen. We call ourselves Christians. Then we all are in the ministry. Whether you ever stand behind the pulpit or not, you're in the ministry of the Lord Jesus. We all are. And so I want to say to you tonight, hold the rope. Somebody's in your basket. And I don't want to focus on so much as what that means. I think it's been developed some and will be more. Or necessarily why. But I want to say something about when we ought to do that. We're told to hold the rope because somebody's in our basket. And that means all the time. You say, well, I just got so many problems, I can't help. I don't have any money, so I can't give. I'm a witness, but I don't have the words. And we're good excuse makers. But we don't have any excuses. Because we have people in our baskets. I'm looking around here tonight. Now I know and I believe no one gets saved unless the Spirit draws him. And I also believe that the Scripture says go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And everybody needs to hear. And I'm looking at some people that you've got a brother that's lost. Maybe you've got a husband that's lost or a wife that's lost or your closest friend that's lost. They're in your basket. They're in your connections. They're your ministry. All of us are part of the family of God. Hallelujah goes right there. Yes, amen. I wouldn't want to be in anybody else's family, I can tell you. I, I'm so thankful to be a part of the family of God. Well, because I'm in God's family, somebody's in my basket. There's some people that are counting on me, that are depending on me, that need me. So I want to challenge you to hold the rope. Number one, when life has dealt you a bad hand. When life has dealt you a bad hand. In Jerusalem at that time, there in the city under the famine that was there. Say it was a judgment of God. I don't know that. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. But I suspect it wasn't the judgment of God on everybody in that place. But there they are. In those circumstances. By the way, can I give you a quick outline? Uh, the blessing is coming. You know, it comes in the end of the story. Don't boil the babies, the blessing's coming. It was in that chapter six passage. 
Can you imagine they killed their babies and ate them? Read it. It'll break your heart. But you know what breaks my heart? I don't have time to preach a sermon. You know what breaks my heart? Is the parents all over America that call themselves Christians who are boiling their babies on the altar of their fun life. Their enjoyment. Their pleasure. Again, I can't preach. Number two, don't blame the preacher. The blessing's coming. The king got all upset and said, I'm going to kill that prophet. Didn't work out real well. Thank God he takes care of his preachers. <laughs> the preacher's in a basket and God takes care of them and I'm with Gary. I'm with him. I believe the preacher first. Me too, brother. Amen. Somebody in the church ought to say amen to that. Somewhere. Besides just preachers. Some of y'all have been around a while. You've watched life go by. And you know the man of God. It's a hard life. Don't blame the preacher. Don't doubt the word of God. The blessing's coming. We read that in chapter 7. And number four, don't hoard the spoil. The blessing's coming. Now you, you preach that any way you want. But there were four lepers. You see it in verse 3? And there were four leprous men. Hold the rope. When life has dealt you a bad hand. Now, I know a good bit about leprosy. I don't know near all there is to know about leprosy. Thank God leprosy is not an issue in America any longer. Uh, uh, antibiotics and penicillin have uh, been a tremendous blessing to us but we went to Israel in the 90's and uh, we saw kids without any arms with a stick in one leg saw people with boils all over them you say that's awful yeah and you got some problems too you know, you may have some health issues. You may have some financial issues. You may have some marital issues. You may have some family issues. But listen, God has called us to help others, to serve him, regardless of the hand that we have been dealt. Hold the rope. Don't make excuses. Do what God gives you to do. Some people have gotten some pretty bad circumstances. I remember that guy in John chapter 9, you know, the blind guy. Somebody said, somebody had to sin in this situation. Well, we all sinners. So yeah, sin had a part in it, but God said, uh uh, this is for the glory of God. You see, you and I need to live wherever we are for the glory of God. Trust him and watch him do what he does. Hold the rope. No matter the hand you've been dealt. Hey, suffering saints make great prayer warriors. Yeah, they know how to get a hold to God because they need God. Make great prayer warriors. Suffering saints can have a great prayer ministry. Great encouragers. There's something you can do. Hold the rope when life has dealt you a bad hand. Number two, hold the rope when people castigate you. You remember the leper situation? Now we can, there's a lot in the Bible. I think 168 places, if I'm not mistaken, lepers are mentioned in the Bible. A bunch. But when a leper uh, uh, is in that place, you notice he's at the entering in of the gate. He's not in town. He's not out of town. He's stuck at the entrance. Yeah. You know why? Unclean. Unclean. Matter of fact, Leviticus teaches us that they have to cry that. Right. 
They have to tell everybody, hey, I'm unclean. You know what would do us all some good? Taking the spiritual analogy of a leprosy. If we'd all just admit, I'm unclean. I'm a sinner saved by grace. I'm unclean. But now you think about these guys. Everybody come in now the gate to the home. Don't want to be around them. Look at them. Look at their sores. They're draining and dripping. Look at them. They're horrible. Just like some of y'all look at sinners. You look at them and you say, look at that person. They're evil. They're awful. Well, sure. They're lost. They need Jesus. But here's my point. Somewhere along the way, somebody ain't going to like you. <laughs> and particularly if you've got preacher in front of your name. I'm thankful God gave me a good forgetter. <laughs> Amen. I'm kind of like the old couple went to the doctor. They've been having, you know, these little, they were getting old and they were forgetting things and they were a little concerned that you know, maybe they had one of those diseases. And so they went to the doctor and he said, did some tests and so on. He said, no, you're all fine. He said, you're just getting old. When you get old, you forget to get the pace for your teeth. You're just getting old. I mean, you know, that's what you do. Well, he said, I'm going to give you a suggestion. Write stuff down. I wish I'd get that suggestion when I was a young man or I'd listen to it. Oh. Anyway, they thought, well, that's good. So they, they went home and they're sitting in their little room there and he, went, he got up. She said, where are you going? He said, I'm going to the kitchen and get me a bowl of ice cream. She said, get me one too. He said, okay. But she said, I want some cherries on mine. He said, okay. She said, now you better write it down. No, no, I'll remember that. Or was it strawberries? I don't forgot. She said, I like some of that Cool Whip on top of my ice cream. Y'all like that too? Yeah. He said, okay. A Sunday, and was it strawberries or cherries, but it don't matter whatever we've got in there, I'll put on it, and some whipped topping on the top, yes. And if there is a cherry, put it on the top too, because I like them Marina Chino cherries. <laughs> he was gone 20 minutes. I guess the ice cream was hard. 20 minutes later, he come back into the little room with a plate of bacon and eggs. <laughs> she said, honey, I told you you should have wrote it down. He said, why? He said, you forgot. She said, you forgot my toast. <laughs> it's good to have a good forgetter sometimes, though, I'm going to tell you. When I was pastoring, just about every week, I receive some criticism, some negative, something said that hurt. I'm serious. Preachers know it, and y'all just think that he's just exaggerating. Let me tell you about one of them. I wish I could forget all of them, but I can't remember to forget this one. This was a long time ago. And the lady had a baby. It wasn't that long ago because she was only in the hospital one night. She got out the next day. I don't know what was going on, but I didn't get to the hospital. She called me up the next day. She gave me what for? How dare you not come to the hospital to see my new baby? And so you say, 
like your life is all that matters in the world. I don't remember what I was doing the night before, but I zipped it and didn't say anything. And I can tell you a few more stories, but I won't. Here's my point. When somebody castigates you, don't you let it stop you from serving God. Amen. Matter of fact, they in your basket. They need you to be Jesus to them. Most of the time we're the devil to them if we do what we want to do, don't we? We need to be, they're in our basket too. When people castigate you like these men, I know they felt it and experienced it. Hold the rope. Let me give you number three and then my favorite preacher is going to come preaching a little bit. Hold the rope. My second favorite preacher. My third favorite preacher. Didn't I say one of my favorite preachers? I just left the one out in the front of it. My favorite's already in heaven. Right? <laughs> I gotta tell you this. Susie and I, you know, we've been to Myanmar, we come back and the whole COVID thing, shut the world down, shut churches down, shut my preaching opportunities down. And I, Calvary called me and they said, would you do a Facebook Live for us? I said, sure. I went and preached. Susie didn't go with me, you know, none of us were in the church but me and Eric. Maybe Shirley, I don't know. Thank you for coming, Shirley. I got home. I said to Susie, she was watching. I said, honey, how did I do? She said, you're my favorite preacher. <laughs> Woo! Praise the Lord. I may not be your favorite preacher, but I'm one girl's favorite Glory. preacher. Praise the Lord. Well, Hold the rope when your circumstances change to the positive. Now we read it, don't need to go back and read it, but did you see the conflict that they had when their circumstances changed to the positive? You see the struggle? Oh, what, what, where are they? Look, let's eat. Ah, we're good eaters, aren't we? Let's eat. Oh, look, there's some stuff. Let's get to, gather. Let's take us over here and dig a hole. And they buried it in the hole. Let's go back and get some more. And, and, and they eat some more, I think, because, you know, they're either Baptist or any Pentecostals here. I hear they like to eat, too. You're a Baptist. Yeah, brethren, they like to eat, too. And so they eat some more. I know they eat some more. And they gathered up the stuff. And somebody said, it says they said, but they didn't all say it at the same time. Somebody said we do not well. It dawned on somebody's mind that somebody else needed them in their life. Now you think about it. Them bunch of hypocrites up there in Jerusalem making us sit outside in the gate. They had plenty of excuses that they could have used. But they said we do not well. And so they gathered it up. And he took it over to the king or to the king's household. Now you think about this, folk. I'm going to say it to you. I'm going to get political for a second. We have a president that's in your basket right now. You decide what happens to him. Now he ain't perfect. Just like us preachers, I guess. <laughs> but at least he's awake. Amen. What, what did you say, say? Now I'm done being political. We have a country that's in our basket. I'd like for some of y'all to call your senator this week and say, hey, you don't put a conservative on the Supreme Court right now. You can forget about 
us of voting for you Amen. going forward. I don't care what letter you got in front of your name. Tell them we need somebody up there to say no abortion. We need somebody up there to say this homosexual thing, this marriage thing, it wasn't right. Congress, you want it? Go pass a law, you bunch of scandals. They're sorry. Now I'm done with the politics. Forgive me. I had to get it off my chest. Now you done got mad at me. How many of you mad at me? Just look at me, me. Thank you. I, I preached if I made somebody mad, didn't I? <laughs> hey, when your life takes a turn for the positive, hold the rope. There's somebody that is in your basket that needs your ministry, that needs your help, that needs your love, that needs your encouragement. Boy, my favorite character in that whole the rope chapter, chapter 9, is Barnabas. Just a few verses down, yep. Paul gets down out of the basket. I hope I'm not stepping on your preaching. No, and, and, and he goes to Jerusalem. And there in Jerusalem, well, they've heard about him. He's got letters that says he can take prisoner, Christians, people of the way. And what by whatever means necessary, mm-hmm. we don't trust him. And Barnabas steps in and says, Hey, folks, I can vouch for him. He's the real deal. I heard him preach over yonder. He knows Jesus. He may not know everything he needs to know. He won't know everything he will know when he goes to write a letter under the inspiration of God. But he knows Jesus. And they received him with open arms. Hey, hold the rope. When your life turns, to a positive. When should we hold the rope? All the time until Jesus comes. I saw this verse and I give it to you and I'm done. And he called his ten servants and he delivered them, Luke 19, 13, ten pounds. And he said unto them, occupy till I come. Now, you know, I, I got a little pea brain. I've always thought, okay, occupy, play defense. That ain't what that word means. That word means busy yourself until he comes. Don't bury your talent, use your talent. Don't hide behind something else, serve God. Be faithful unto death, the Bible says, or be faithful till he comes. Hold the rope when life doesn't go the way you'd like. Hold the rope when people don't treat you the way you'd like. And hold the rope when all of a sudden God ushers you into a place of blessing. And every one of us have been there at some point in our life. We think, how in the world did I get here? I don't deserve to be here. But it sure is good. And this food sure is good. And look, there's a little bit of money over there too. That money ain't yours. That money wasn't them lepers. They should have died in Jerusalem or they should have died with the Assyrians. But God intervened. When God intervenes in your life, you take that which he has intervened with and use it for the glory of God. Father, thank you for the word and for the opportunity to share it. Bless now, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, brother. Praise God. Hallelujah to God. Let's stand together. It's good to be here tonight. Good to have the word of God preached to our hearts. I'm glad that someone was holding the rope for me. And, uh, so there are times when we get, we get out yonder and there'll be somebody that'll hold the rope and be faithful to the Lord. It'll, it'll minister to us. It'll help us. I'm glad of that. Thank God. And I, I tell you, God's blessed me so wonderfully. And uh, I want to be a blessing to other folks, don't y'all? Praise God.